Hi everyone, I came back with another lecture and in this lecture I want to talk about RCHOP, one of the cancer therapies. So what is RCHOP? RCHOP is a chemoimmunotropic regimen that consists of rituximab, cyclophosphamide, doxorubicin, vincristine, and prednisone. RCHOP is used in different types of lymphoma, including diffuse large B cell lymphoma and other types of non Hodgkin lymphoma. The RCHOP regimen is usually administered once every 21 days for an average of six cycles. It can be given in three, four, or six cycles depending on the protocol and factors such as severity of the disease. The first drug in RCHOP regimen is rituximab. Rituximab is an antibody against CD20. CD20 is a protein that is expressed at the surface of the B cells. CD20 is required for B cell function and communication with other cells. When CD20 is targeted, B cells, specifically malignant cells that express a high amount of CD20, will start malfunctioning and will be removed from our body by a process called apoptosis or programmed cell death. This process is a chain of biochemical events and pathways that results in removal of unwanted cells. Rituximab in combination with CHOP is used for diffuse large B cell lymphoma and other subtypes of non Hodgkin lymphoma. Due to anti CD20 effect of rituximab, it has also been used in autoimmune diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis and idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So let's just start with cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide is a DNA crosslinker. Cyclophosphamide, when metabolized in our body, it forms a phosphamide mustard metabolite that crosslinks or attaches to DNA structure and inhibits its synthesis, hence prohibiting cell function and proliferation. However, cyclophosphamide needs to be activated by an enzyme called P450 to be functional. And I will tell later why this is important. Cancer cells may establish resistance to cyclophosphamide via different mechanism. One of these mechanism is decreasing cyclophosphamide uptake. The other mechanism is decreasing the expression of its activating enzyme, which, has, which I mentioned previously. The other mechanism is increasing the expression of an enzyme that result in enhanced metabolization and detoxification of cyclophosphamide. Beside non-Hodgkin lymphoma, cyclophosphamide is also used in other cancers, including non-Hodgkin lymphoma, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, bone and soft tissue sarcoma. Drug interaction is one of the cyclophosphamide potentially serious side effects. Cyclophosphamide can increase or decrease the levels of other drugs by interference with their met metabolism. Also, cyclophosphamide it needs to be used in, with caution in patients with kidney dysfunction, and hence its dose needs to be adjusted in people with kidney issue. Other side effects include suppression of bone marrow, bladder toxicity that may result in bleeding, and nausea and vomiting. The next drug is doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is an anthracycline antibiotic that belongs to the anti-cancer family with the same name. It's found as a natural product of a bacteria group called Streptomyces species. Doxorubicin is a DNA intercalator. It means that doxorubicin inserts itself into DNA structure and inhibits its synthesis. It binds to DNA and prohibits an enzyme called DNA topoisomerase 2 and prevent DNA topoisomerase from doing its job. This will result in DNA break. Further, it also produces oxygen-free radicals and breaks DNA strands. Additionally, it prevents DNA transcription to RNA by inhibiting an enzyme called DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. 
Cancer cells can also establish resistance to doxorubicin by producing a protein that efflux the drug out of the cell and prevent accumulation of doxorubicin inside the cell. Also, they may produce topoisomerase enzymes that have a low affinity to bind to doxorubicin. Beside non-Hodgkin lymphoma, doxorubicin is also used in breast cancer, ovarian cancer, small cell lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, bladder cancer, and thyroid cancer. One of the significant side effects of doxorubicin is cardiac toxicity. So patients who receive doxorubicin, we need to monitor their cardiac function. Also, doxorubicin, it needs to be used with caution in patients with abnormal liver function, and it may need dose adjustment. Finally, doxorubicin can also interact with some medications. The next drug in the ARCHOP regimen is vincristin. Vincristin is a plant alkaloid that inhibits cell proliferation via disrupting tubulin formation. Tubulin belongs to the alpha or beta tubulin protein family that helps in DNA segregation during cell cycles. Hence, by this disruption, chromosome separation cannot proceed during the cell division. When cells start malfunctioning due to the vincristin effect, apoptosis will be initiated again and these cells will be eliminated from our bodies. Cancer cells can also establish resistance to vincristin. It can be either by overexpression or production of a complex protein that sends vincristin out of the cells or a flux protein, or mutation in tubulin substructures may also decrease vincristin affinity to tubulin and hence its efficacy. Vincristin is also used in different malignancies, including acute lymphocytic leukemia, Hodgkin lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. Because a specific enzyme metabolizes vincristin, it should be used with caution in patients receiving medication that go through the same metabolization pathway similar to vincristin. So it may cause drug interaction and hence change in other drug levels. Two examples of these drugs are phenytoin and digoxin. One of the vincristin side effect is neurotoxicity. If it's used with cisplatin and paclitaxel may cause more severe neurotoxicity. Due to its metabolization by enzymes in our livers, Vincristin also needs to be used with caution in patients with abnormal liver function. The last medication in our job regimen is prednisone. Prednisone belongs to the steroid family. Besides the anti-inflammatory effect, the steroid family has antineoplastic effect. Prednisone, after binding to its receptor, it induces multiple signaling pathways that result in programmed cell death or apoptosis. However, the exact mechanism of killing hematopoietic cancer cells is not well understood. It's possibly modulated via various pathways. Prednisone is used in different malignancies. It has been included in regimen used for acute lymphocytic leukemia, acute myocytic leukemia, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, Hodgkin lymphoma, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. Concerning the side effects, due to anti-inflammatory effects of prednisone, its usage may result in higher rate of infection. Also, prednisone interferes with signaling pathway that helps with glucose transportation within cells. On the other hand, it reduces the synthetic effect of insulin. Further, it induces insulin resistance in different tissues. And finally, it enhances the effect of other counter-regulatory hormones such as glucagon and epinephrine, which increases the endogenous synthesis of glucose. The result is increased in blood glucose or hyperglycemia and related adverse effects such as exacerbation of diabetes. Thank you everyone and see you in the next lecture.